Hey there guys, this is Zyro Master 101 and today I'm going to do a little playthrough on the game Dead by Daylight, developed by Behavior, released in 2015 for the PC and I believe in 2016 for the PS4 and Xbox One and then they have a later port for the Switch and then now they have one for the cell phones. Um, so what is this game about? It's uh, basically a hide-and-seek type of game. You have five or four survivors against one killer. The survivors have to do the generators, and the killer has to stop them from doing said generators. Alright? So, at this beginning moment, I will start by uh, going to the tutorials. I'm gonna separate this into two videos, so the first one will be about the killers. So, I will play three matches or maybe four, we'll see if the times allow it. Uh, and yeah, in case you already played this game before and you already feel confident about it, please, uh, I will leave a comment below with a timestamp in case you just want to see the matches and stuff. But for now, I will uh, catch up with people who doesn't play the game a lot and doesn't know how it works, alright? So let's go here to help and tutorials for those who's, who want. For those who are living, I see you guys in the matches. Alright, so, so those who stay, let's uh, begin then the help and tutorials. As I said, I will first separate things for the killers. Alright, so I will play as the killers in this, in this video. On the next video, I will play as a survivor. So... Okay, killer how to win. The main objective of the killer is to sacrifice the survivors to the entity in order to achieve their goal. You have to patrol the areas and find survivors, chase and injure and catch before they escape, survive before they escape, carry survivors to a sacrificial hook and hang them to the entity consumed. Right? Meanwhile, the survivors try to attempt to repair five generators. And after they do that, they have to open two power exits and make their escape. The killers should do everything in their power to stop them. This guy will help you, alright? So, basically, huh, it's actually weird, this, uh, this tutorial, because uh, I remember there is one about you, you controlling the killer, so this is a new tutorial. Oh, there he is. Sorry guys, I forgot that's about this one. <laughs> I was actually reading it. I thought it, I thought they had to remove it. Good thing they didn't. So I, will, I can explain in length about the killer. All right. All right. As the entity commands that by they like an asymmetric game that is playing playing trials between up to four survivors and a murderous killer. As killer, your main objective is to attack down and hook many survivors as possible. Slashing, all right? Uh, killers may injure or down survivors with wild time blow for their primary weapon. Try to try not to miss and may give them a brief moment they need to escape for a gun grasp. All right, so I'm controlling Trapper here, and uh, uh, I'm playing on the PS4, so R2 Giver is our primary power, and that is a, a Machete, I think, and you can use to attack the survivors. The killers play in first person, while the survivors play in third person. As you can see here, this is Meg, a survivor. And I'm playing as Trapper, because you can play as different killers. And Trapper here, and, uh, he has the ability to put bear traps on the ground, and if survivors uh, get caught by it, they, they trap themselves, alright? So now I have a choice. I uh, I rather attack them, or I can just simply grab them by press R1. Now they are on my back. As a survivor, they can wiggle it out. Uh, what is it called when you move your analog stick uh, left and right to try to wiggle it out? There is a bar that you have to fill. If you fill this bar before I take you to the sacrificial hook, then. You escape. I get dizzy for a second, and then you have a brief moment to escape, right? Uh, so 
what happens when I kill a Keta survivor? So you have two options. The number one is to sacrifice, to put them on a hook, right? Like I'm going to do right now. There are a lot of hooks in every map. So the survivors are now in the struggle state. When a survivor has been stuck on the hook for an extended period of time, the entity will summon for forcing them to struggle for their life. Hooking a survivor twice will force them into a struggle state immediately or sacrifice them if they already have been in a struggle state. So survivors that die on the hook are sacrificed to the enemy and they're only from the trap. Alright, so here's the thing. Here's the thing there. Um, if a survivor, if you hook a survivor and he gets unhooked, and by, my, and by that I mean other survivors can go to the hook and save that person, right? And you go after the same person and you, and you put them on the hook again, they will be on a struggle, which means the entity will force them, try to force them to, to, to kill them, right? And they have to press X and stuff. To keep pressing X to avoid that. If they even that get safe again, the next time you put them on the hook, they die immediately. So for every survivor needs to put at least two times on the hook. Alright? So yeah, a lunge attack. If you hold R2, see see this is the normal attack, right? The lunge attack is R2 if you hold R2 and you will go a little bit forward. See? I hold that for a second. Alright. Hmm. Where is that special survivor? Oh, so this is the mechanic for the survivors. Right? The pallet. If they... They can drop pallets on your head, of course. And that... That makes you, uh, that stun you for a second. Or that can serve as a mind game, uh, as you can see. As you can see, um, if they, if they want, they could just circle me around. Because they can pass through the palace even though they close it. They can dash it through. Till they scan, they only can destroy it. Now, it's your choice. You know, either destroy the palace and waste a couple of seconds chasing a survivor, or do you prefer to to avoid getting hit by the pallet at all. Now you see that red stuff there? This right here is scratch marks. So when a survivor runs, they leave this, this, this scratch marks. This is where this is used for the killer so, so he can see where the survivor is at. Now if the survivor is walking normally or crouch walking, then he doesn't leave scratch marks. Now they, they disappear, you see? They are already gone. It's because the, the scrap marks is only for a couple seconds. So you gotta be quickly about finding them. So yeah. Look, I see scratch marks. I see Meg. Look, Meg is running. Right? Now I can attack her once, right? And then she's injured now. Now when she's injured, she, she's bleeding. Give her more easy scratch marks. Right, and that is, doesn't show there, but on this right next to that white bar there, or on the corner, there's always the there's the survivor the survivor stats, and if I hit a survivor, it will show to them that they are injured to me and to their teammates. So right now she's injured, she's bleeding. Look, I down. Right now she's on a dying state, and you can easily lose a survivor if you don't pay attention to it when they are on this down state. Unless you have something called perks, which I will explain later. All right. So when a survivor is on a down state, you can always pick them up. They have a timer on down. So look, she she's trying to wiggle free. So, as the one survivors are down, they have a look. I can drop them down if I press circle, right? The survivor has a timer when they are down, and this timer gets low and lower every time they are down. Now, two things can happen: other survivors can come to this dying person and heal them, nurse them back to health, 
and then you have to two hit them again, right? Or one hit them in case they only manage to, to heal them once. Or she can just stay there crawling until the time slows up and they in it's considered that she died. Right? So But it's more than vicious for you to just uh, put them on a hook. This is her second hook, I believe. So the end uh it doesn't show but the end that it would have been. Alright. So uh, one way to slow down survivors rather than chasing them is to destroy the progress. And what it be like that is when they are doing generators and you shield them away, right? And you go next to the generator, you can damage them by pressing R1. Like this. Right? Now when you see how it's sparking, that means that the progress, because every generator has a bar progress where only survivors can see. And now that it's sparking, it's it's getting lower instead of getting high up. Right? Generators can only be completed if the survivors are doing it. So don't worry about it in case you know you don't see them around and you see a generator and you and you think that maybe maybe they are uh, um, maybe the generator is done by itself. It's not like that. They have to be constantly there doing it. Okay? Alright. So hook mag, hook to I hook flow that. This is white. Right? <laughs> Dwight is the cowardly type, okay? And uh, survivors can actually hide themselves in lockers, okay? Now, it is your choice whether to you to check the lockers or not. It's it's more like an educated guess, okay? So, I'm gonna catch him there. There. I catch him. Boom. On a hook, right? This is the indication where they complete a generator. You saw for a second there, I forgot to say, that a flash there on the light. That means that the, uh, they complete a generator, right? And you see the generator counter there, it starts with 5. And it goes down every time they do a generator, right? This is Claudette. And she likes to blend a lot with the environment. So let's take care of her. See, first hit. Every hit you do, you kind of slow down yourself because you, you have to clean or whatever. So it, it gives the survivor a healthy speed post, but not enough that you cannot catch them. So, all right. There you go. See, she completed the last, the last thing, the last uh, generator, and she's now showing the indication of the exit gate. So Mag here is gonna open the exit gate. That flash there, that means that they're that the, they died. The sacrifice is complete, and they didn't get saved, right? Uh, I can simply just grab Mag here, as I'm doing here. But you see those lights here? She has to stay here and keep holding R1 in order to open the exit gate and she can finally escape. But unfortunately, I catch her this time. Yellow uh, hooks are hooks where you already have hook a survivor. Now, if you sacrifice a survivor on a hook and you try to go to that same hook again, you see that it's actually destroyed. Survivors can destroy hooks. But they get replenished. They, uh, the entity it, it allows the, the hooks to come back. Unless, of course, you sacrifice a person on that hook. And that hook... Um, uh, and that hook gets destroyed forever. Right. That's the only instance. So I'm gonna sacrifice here... Uh, Meg. Alright. The mag is sacrificed. And that's it. Right? I believe that's it. This was the tutorial that I did um, back in. Oh! 
Right. I can't. I'm not, not, not now. Not now. I need to, uh, I will do that next video when we get the survivors. But for now, let's stick up with the killers. Okay? So that was the survivors, the, the killer side of things. Uh, now I will go a little bit in depth with perks. I uh, mentioned them a couple of, uh, a couple of minutes ago about perks and the utility. So here, this is the main hub, of course. Uh, here you have the archives, which I will explain in another time. You play a survivor. And play as killer. This is an online game. There is no offline compartment about it besides the tutorial. So, but so it's it's uh, you you better have connection. And uh, don't worry about it because this game is very popular. Um, there's, a, there's a very active fan base, and you will have no problem finding matches. The only thing is that I will explain later, but for now. Let me let me go here and steal it. So play a skiller. You see here, uh, this is this is my killer. Uh, this is my uh, one of the killers that I use. Her name is Xana, also known as the Huntress. Her main weapon is an axe, and her power is actually throwing tomahawks or little hatches at you uh, in order to slow you down, right? But, if I want to select a different killer, I click here on Killers, and boom. This right here are all the killers available for you to play, alright? Until, I believe, until right here, right? Don't, don't count Michael here. Yes, this is Michael Myers, but don't count Ma Michael here. So, until here to the Huntress. At least on the PS4 version, that's the all the all these skills here. Uh, Trapper, Wraith, Hill Billy, the Nurse, Doctor, the Hag, and the Hunters, they are all free for you to play. The other ones you have to buy it. Such as, uh, as uh, what do you like to call it? Uh, contract or or license killers in, in this thing, which means that the behavior, the developer has to pay a, a license fee in order to have these killers here, for example, Michael Myers, it's, uh, the pig, which is Amanda from Saw, my favorite movie ever, I will be playing as her as well, Freddy Krueger, Bubba from uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right, the ghost face, the screen, uh, the demo Gorgon, for, I don't have him because I didn't buy him, but the demo is going to go for certain things, right? And if I heard correctly, if I heard correctly, in the future, in the future, there will be a, there will be a, uh, there will be, what is the name of that, that dude? Pyramid Head for Silent Hill, Silent Hill. So, it's an awesome thing, you know. They have all these skills. Of course, they have original skills like the Trapper, the Wraith, the Nurse, Anna, uh, a Deerus, which I will be playing as well. Spirit, the Legion, Clown, you know. But uh, yeah, so let me go here to Trapper. Actually, let me go here to Anna. All right. So when you start. Uh, you you start with one part. You can choose between your killer's primary perks. What do I mean by that? Let's look here. Hex. Hunter's lullaby. Very hard. Hunter's perk. I am the hunters, which means I already get I gain access to that. Hex is ruling its power in despair. Your your hunt is an irresistible song of dread. Which bundles your prey. Attention survivors receive a 6% regression penalty when missing any skill check. Each time a survivor is hooked, Hunter Lullaby grows in power. What does it mean? So, when this perk is activated, activated um, survivors uh, 
takes more difficult for survivors to 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 do uh, generators and skill checks, which I will explain once again on the survivor side. But just to give it a somewhat up, skill checks are the the little challenges that survivor has to do when they are doing healing uh, generators. It uh, uh, cleans the totems, which this one is an hex, and hex it's a totem. So in the match there will be five skeleton skeleton totems, right? And one of them will be flaming because they have this work activate. The ones that has hex in it always has a one flaming totem. Survivors can deactivate it if they find the correct one, which is the one that is with the fire which is flaming, which is lit it up. So, back to the perk topic. So what does that mean? That means that I can use this perk, if I so please, right? And, um, in order for me to progress, because you're only gonna have this, the, uh, you're only gonna have this, uh, this area here open for you, right? Because this three here, it's gonna be close unless you get to a higher level. So how do I get to a higher level? Well, you play matches and you get this. This is called blood points. Blood points is the current. It's the the second, the first important color in the game, I would say. And uh, you use these blood points to get in matches. Depending on your performance, you can get good blood points. Uh, you have a good amount of blood points or bad amount of blood points. Uh, in the past, you can only do it by, you know, being good at matches. But for now, the archive is here to actually help you to gain more blood points, which I will explain the archive in a minute. But for now, let's just say you get, I don't know, 100,000 blood points. Then you come here to the second tab here. You see, here we are here in loadout, which is the, the perk selection. And we go here to the blood web. In the blood web, where you can buy perks and stuff for you and add-ons for your power. As I said before, every killer has a power. And Hunter's power is her hatchet. So here, for example, if I buy this common toxin, uh, a toxin applied to the to hatchet's blade, the very snake toxin costs Pioneers in such a small amount. Okay, so if I hit a person with my with my with my uh, hatchet while I'm activating this power here, and while I have this adder, they get tired for 30 seconds. Great, right? And it's always random like that, right? You can get this. Uh, uh, you can get uh, add-ons for your for your stuff, offerings. Uh, what is, that? what is an offering here? Uh, offering, offering. Aha! Here. No. No, that is not an offering. Well, you get offerings which is requests that you do before the match starts. Which I will show in a second. But you get that. Oh, here is an offering. A black ward. So, burning this offering grants you protection against those who are the of those add-ons that you lose because this doesn't stay these add-ons doesn't stay after the match is over you lose them but with this offering here you can actually save it and use only the offering the offering is also lost by the way so you have you are granted a second chance per se right um what else Uh, yes, um, the add-ons are, add-ons in offerings and parts are divided by uh, ranks, right? So, there is the common, there is the uncommon, and there is the rare, and there is the very rare, and then there is the ultra-rare, which is the, the top tier. So, every time you see an offering on an add-on, on a or uh, a perk, I mean not perks, perks can only get to rare, but uh, those who add-ons and, and, and offerings, they often get to the ultra-rare tier. So, 
let's just say you buy it, you buy some perks, right? There will be some uncommon perks like this one, uh, Better Murmur, which allow you to see the aura of survivors when they repair generator. So that means that the, that you can. Uh, there are perks in the game that they are free, free per se, because all the killers they have three essential perks that they are from themselves, right? For example, uh, let's look here. The pig, right? Oh, here. The nurse. Let's go to the nurse. She's a great example. So the nurse here, she has a perk called Nurse Stone. It's her perk. It's exclusive to her. But if you get to level 35, to level 35 with her, you, we can, you can only progress to the level if you spend shit on the blood web, by the way. Every time you complete a web here, for example here, see, you complete this web here. Let me, let me show here. I'm gonna buy stuff just for the sake of it. Alright. Look, I complete that web. Boom, I'm level 45 now. So uh If I get to level 35, level 30 in that case, level 30, I'm starting to get what is called Chibble Perks. That means her perk here, Nurse Colin, uh, uh, Tatanophobia, which is also her perk, and I believe that is also one else, which I'm not sure. And Streeter here. If I get to, uh, to level 30, I can start, I can start, uh, I get this teachable perk, which is Tatanophobia. That means this perk can appear in other people, in other killers' uh, blood webs. They can have her perk as well, right? And that is great. Which means you do not bind. If you don't want, you cannot be bind by own killer. You can just get to level 30, and then to level 35 to get Nurse's Calling, and then to level 40 to get Streeter. If you want to get her three perks, you have to go to level 40, alright? And she's just an example, that is applied to every killer and every survivor, alright? So, here's a nurse here, and uh, I'm going here to Amanda, the pig, and boom, I have her perk, right? Because I, or, I did... Uh, uh, I get her to level 45. So, in case you in case you want some good perks, always go through some killers, even the ones you don't like. Maybe they have a perk that you are interested upon that can help you to slow down the game or or um, um, make more easy to kill the survivors or whatever, right? So. Let me talk about now that I talk about the perks. Let me talk about add-ons. You know, every every as I said before, there are some there are some uh, um, some tiers: the ultra rare, the rare, the very rare, and the rare, the uncommon, and the common. Right. Just for 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 sake, these uh, the add-ons that they are not teachable, so you cannot see their add-ons. Um, on others, on the people's blood flag, only the perks. So, they, the ultra rare are probably the best ones that you want to get when you're doing the blood web. When you see that, when you see an ultra rare on your blood web, try to grab it. Now, the offerings, they are ones that they are, they are uh, commonplace, like this one. Uh, that coin, which is, you know, prevent chest to appear. Chests for survivors, they have uh, stuff in it that survivors can use, and you can prevent that from happening more. That is the if you use this offering. The offerings you use in one match, and that's it. They are gone, right? As I said before, same thing with the add-ons. Now you see the number here, three. 
that means that I have three of these, eight of these, right? So I can use in multiple matches until the number runs out. There are offerings that they allow you to get more blood points, or, or that means if you can level faster. That they are in categories like a, a sacrifice, which means if you sacrifice a lot, or hunting, if you hunt down survivors, or brutality, if you are really pesky, if you give survivor first hit, if you damage them, damage that generators, right? And they are. There are ones that interfere with survivors, like, oh, survivors start start to try separating, right? But the most important, at least for me, uh, the most important, and uh, I don't think Michael has it now. Uh, the most important offering for me is let me see, Anna, do you have it? No, I think I saw on. Um, oh, this is an interesting thing. It doesn't happen to me anymore because I already have them. But uh, sometimes you get into killer offerings. So, oh, doesn't happen anymore then. Never gonna happen again. But this one is for offerings that allow you to play as killers that you that the game knows that you don't have, it. like. Smoking sleep and then you play as the nightmare, which is Freddy Krueger, or this one, where you play as the pig that is Amanda, right? Um, so, all right, let me go back on track. I was actually surprised he retired that one. I didn't know that. It's been a while since I've been playing this game. So, all right, let me go here to Nurse Bloodweb because I saw it. There he is. Alright, I'm gonna bite one of these. Alright, I bought an Ultra Rare. Now, Ebony Mo uh, Moment Memento Mori. So, Moris are, are the ability that you are gained for that match to kill a survivor. There are the yellow ones, the, 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 the rare ones, where you can. Uh, the uncommon, that means, that you can kill the last survivor, which means that if the other the other escape or get killed, you get the ability to kill the survivor. That is the green ones which I don't have here, but it allows straight out of the bat that you can kill it. So how it works. So in order to kill one, to kill a survivor you have to uh, you have to hook them. Hook them at least once Waiting for the for them to escape or to get saved, then that survivor who got saved now you has the ability to kill. And when you down them, you can actually perform an action with a two that allows them that allows you to kill them, and then they are off for the match. So the the most important one is this one because this one allows you to kill all survivors. Which means that match is cursed for a way because you can only need to put them all four of them on hooks and wait them for saving themselves and then you just swipe clean them by killing them. Alright. Right here in customize is where you can trade your costume. Now, in order to have costume you need to buy it and to buy it there is two options we go here to store this second all right look here here look this one nice outfit for the nerds you know cool uh you can buy it by giving them 20 21,600 shards. Shards are the the second most important for us, but some people think it's important. It's the in-game currency. You can trade these shards in order to get a uh, uh, costume, or if you save 9,000 like I did, buy killers. 
I only buy the, the license pillars because they are not allowed to be bought by in-game currency. You can only buy the, 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 the original pillars uh, that they create, like only or or uh, Adiris or Huntress, etc. Right? Um, how do you get these shards? In order to get these shards, you have to go, you have to, you know, progress. Every time you, uh, your level is the same for survival. So, you play a level. So, um, when you escape or when you kill a skiller, you, you get a ranking. There are things to do on the match that give you ranking. For example, oh, I got a gold medal because I save a lot of people as a survivor. Or I got a gold medal because I kill people. Those medals serve as a, a, uh, a trial for you in order for you to get more of this, more of XP or less, depend that, that depends on your performance. And that XP is throwing on this level here. So it's it's difficult because I don't I don't get into itty gritty details about that. So just say that you have to play it play it uh, normally. I recommend you play more skiller because I see that it's more easy to have the killer killer gets more uh, XP than survivors. But I don't know, I could be wrong. That is also this one, uh, Oryx cells. This Oryx cells it, it's the the the, the game currency that you can that you have to buy it, basically. So, which means that you only get this if you spend money. It's more easy for if you want to spend it. It's more easy for you to just uh, to just. It's more easy for you to just uh, to to buy the packs. The the, the 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 packs for for the killers and survivors. Every oh here, look at it. See, I can spend nine thousand if I want to, to buy these survivors here. It's cool, very cool. Uh, I already have most of them, but uh, I wish I I wish I could to buy him to buy him. As a trophy hunter, it pains me to play this game because uh, you know every pack. A pack of survivors and killers, that means one killer and one survivor every three months. And every three months there is new trophies that I have to go. And there is always two trophies that are separate for the new survivor and the new killer. And I don't have that money, or I don't have that in-game currency to buy them. So I always left behind. I always spend me to it. Alright. The last thing I want to talk about this tutorial is the archive. So, in case you want more blood points, you can have it by uh, by this doing the archives. So, archives they have this challenge, really challenge that you have to do uh, in order to in order to get uh, more blood points. You see, I have if I drop three pallets on a civilian while I'm being chased by the killer. I get 50,000 uh, 50, blood points and three, three that blue stuff, which I forgot what it is. Uh, what is the name? Reef fragments. So, the reef fragments you see is here on the reef. You see the, your progression, it's just like a regular battle pass that you get prizes. If you buy the battle pass, you get more, more shit. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't give a fuck about the, the blood points. There is also character specific challenges like this one, Dance of Death, get it chased by the kill for 30 seconds with cake. So if you have the survivor you can do it. If you don't have it then you don't need to worry about it. The they they tweak the challenge a bit in order for you to be more easier for everybody to do it. And those character specific challenges doesn't actually stop you from progress because you have to come here. On the epilogue so in order to you to pass for the next level here level two and the challenge get more difficult but the money gets more good right level three and then it gets crazy so yeah i believe 
I believe that is it for this tutorial. Um, hmm. Ah. Oh. So, as I said before, survivors can this is the game online. So survivors can band together. Friends can actually be together and you know be at a four against one type of scenario where four friends is against you so just be on a lookout for that uh huh i feel like that's it for me that's everything i want to explain uh if there's something i miss uh, uh i apologize maybe i rectify that when i do my survivor side of things but for now, that was a lot of talk, wasn't it? <laughs> well, for now, I'll be on my merry way, alright? I'll be inside doing the, the matches. So, yeah, let's go to the matches now. <laughs>